Welcome back everybody. Patrick here moving on to another question. We have to write an equation for a quartic polynomial function f of x such that these conditions hold where f of x is greater than or equal to 0 when x is between 1 and 3, f of x is less than or equal to 0 when x is less than 1 or x is greater than 3, and then these two points have to be on the graph. f of negative 5 equals 0, f of 2 equals 5. So, before writing out the equation, as I've mentioned before, when we've done a question like this, is you always want to try to graph it first, and then write out the equation after, just so you can visually see what's going on. Now, this is a quartic polynomial, so we know that that means that it has a degree of 4. Now, we don't know whether the leading coefficient is going to be positive or negative, so this quartic polynomial is going to have n behavior from here to here or from here to here. So we're not sure yet, but it's either going to be this or that. Now, notice that it says f of x is greater than or equal to 0 when x is between 1 and 3. So these points here represent the intercepts. So this is 1, this is 3. And this function is going to be greater than 0 in that interval, greater than or equal to 0. And it's going to be equal to 0 at those endpoints, 1 and 3. And then it says f of x is going to be less than or equal to 0 when x is less than 1. So it's going to be less than 0. So the y values are going to be negative. Um, when x is less than 1, because this is 1, this is 3. And it's also going to be negative when x is greater than 3. So it's going to look something like this, and then look something like that. Right? And this is actually making sense. So does that mean that the end behaviors are just going to be like that, perhaps? Well, notice that we have some other points to consider here. So in this third condition, it says f of negative 5 equals 0. f of negative 5 equals 0, that's the same as the coordinate negative 5 and 0, which is over here, which is now making stuff a little bit more confusing for us because this function can't just keep going down. It has to hit this coordinate of negative 5 and 0. And then it also has a coordinate of 2 and 5. And 2 and 5 would be maybe somewhere around here, right? An x value in between 1 and 3, 2, and then 5 is somewhere there. So that's making sense. The problem is here, right? We have this other x-intercept of negative 5, but we have to make sure that this function has an end behavior to here, right? Because it's a quartic polynomial, meaning that if the end behavior is on this side, on the right side, in uh, quadrant um, 4, then the behavior on the left side has to be in quadrant 3. And the problem is, is that the function has to be less than or equal to 0 when x is less than or equal to 1. So how is that going to work? Well, what we can maybe do is we can have this function turn and then bounce off that x-intercept of negative 5. And notice here how the, fun or, uh, the conditions are still holding in this function that we drew. Right? So let's go through them one by one. f of x is still greater than or equal to 0 when x is between 1 and 3. So right here, it's above the x-axis. The y values are positive f of x is less than or equal to 0 when x is less than negative 1. Notice when x is less than negative 1, the function is either at 0 or below, which is what we need it to be, right? So even at this x-intercept of negative 5, it's only hitting this y value of 0, which it's allowed to do, and then after, it's still negative because it bounces off that x-intercept. And it's also negative or less than or equal to 0 when x is greater than or equal to 3, which is this portion right here, right? f of negative 5 equals 0, we have that point there. f of 2 equals 5, we have that point right there. 
So this is the graph uh, of this quartic polynomial with these conditions right here. So the trickiest part was realizing that there's going to be this bounce here. Okay, and now we can make a equation. So we got y equals a, you always want to put an a in front. We're going to have a factor x plus 5, right, for this x-intercept of negative 5, but because it's bouncing there, we know that this x plus 5 has to have an even order. Right, so it'd be x plus 5 squared then this uh, positive one for the x-intercept can be represented by x minus 1. This is going to be x minus 3. Right, so notice how this is a quartic polynomial. Degree 2, degree 1, degree 1. Add them all up, we got a degree of 4. Now to solve for this a value, we got to pick a point on the polynomial that is something other than the x-intercepts, and luckily we're given this point, f of 2 equals 5, so 2 and 5. So we could plug in 5 for the y value, and then plug in 2 for all of the x values. Right? And then we can just solve for this a. So we'll have 5 equals a, this will be 7 squared, which would be 49, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 3 is um, negative 1. Multiplying all that out, 5 equals negative 49a. So isolating for the a, dividing both sides by negative 49, we get uh, negative 5 over 49. So that a value is negative 5 over 49, and we can plug that in right here. So negative 5 over 49, y equals that. That is the equation of this quartic polynomial, right? And that makes sense, too, that this is negative because negative 5 over 49 times 1 squared times 1 times 1. So the leading coefficient is going to be negative 5 over 49. It's a quartic polynomial. And it makes sense for the leading coefficient to be negative because the end behaviors, we figured out when drawing the graph, according to these conditions, the end behaviors are from quadrant three to quadrant four. And those end behaviors are for a quartic polynomial that has a negative leading coefficient. So it makes sense that we got a negative value for the A. And this is the final equation. So that's the answer. So again, the trickiest part was knowing that we had to bounce the graph off of that x-intercept at negative 5.